Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Chad from Chad DIY. Today I have in my shop my dream machine, an X-Tool P2 laser cutter. And now before we get into this video, I just want to give a big thank you to all my subscribers, to everyone that has watched my videos over the years. Without you, I would not have this laser in my shop right now, so I just can't thank you enough. So with all that being said, let's go around and check out all the features of this laser, and then we'll get ready to make some cuts. So let's start with the front here. We got the main power button here and we have the main door right here. Now it's got two kind of piston hinges, I guess you would say, to make for really smooth opening and closing. And this really is a beautiful machine up close. I'm just amazed by the quality of it. All right, another nice feature it has, instead of the typical honeycomb that you'd have on a dial laser, it has all these slots that can be removed. Kind of take it in and out there. And it also has this tray that totally pulls out. So when I make the stand for it in a separate video, I'm going to leave the stand. I'm going to leave a hole open in the stand so you could take out all these slots and really you can engrave a huge item from underneath. So on the left hand side we're looking at, we have an ethernet hookup and then it looks like a USB hookup as well. Now on the back we have a venting port, it's all built in. I think it's around just under 200 CFMs it shoots out so it'll extract all the fumes. And down here we have, I think this is for fire suppression and fire sensors. That's kind of an add-on and it wasn't included in the machine, but I think you can add it on for a little extra safety precaution. And down here you have your power cable and your on switch. Now on the right hand of the machine you have an emergency stop button on the back. Now it might have been a little handier being on the front, maybe right here, right by the power button, but uh, it's definitely, definitely within reach to still get it off. And then back to the front where you have that power button again. Now in the instruction booklet, you're going to see how much antifreeze you're going to want to use depending on your area. I live in Minnesota. It gets absolutely freezing here. Usually my garage doesn't get that cold, but I don't want to take any chances. So I'm going on the high end of adding the antifreeze to a higher mixture. And also they, you're going to want to mix it with uh, purified water. Now I've seen in a lot of videos, they'll use distilled water as well. The manual says purified water, which uh, purified water right there. So I don't know. I, I, do what you want to do, I guess, on that as far as deciding whether it's distilled or purified. For my research, distilled is kind of just another level of purified where it gets rid of the minerals. But the booklet does say purified, so that's what I'm going with. All right, got the antifreeze all in there, ready to go. I think it's officially time to do the peel. All right, now I have my laptop hooked up to the machine. It did detect it right away, it was pretty easy. I did have to refresh it one time when I was trying to find the device, then it detected. I probably should have turned that on sooner. I think that was the issue, but pretty easy. It went through some updates and now we're ready to kind of calibrate the laser. Now to calibrate the laser, we're gonna go into this little gear icon here. And we're gonna go down to settings. 
and do an optical path setup test. And then you can kind of control the laser module with this. I already have it far in the, the far right corner is where you want to have it. And then we're going to use a little piece of masking tape to kind of see where that laser is at. So put, so put the piece of masking tape there. We're going to shut the machine. And then we're going to run one pulse. And so it just shot a quick laser beam across there. And I'll zoom in for the results there. So I do have it calibrated, so it's right in the center of that circle there. I did have to adjust the mirrors a little bit, so, or the mirror settings. So you just take the screwdriver that it came with, and these are for the vertical, the ones up and down on the side here, and those are for the horizontal. So you kind of just tweak the settings. My suggestion is you tweak them very lightly. Make a pulse, tweak them, just keep tweaking them a little bit here and there. Um, they do have some set screws on the side, uh, so you let the set screws off, you tweak them, get it all nice and straight, and then you're ready to make a cut. So I have moved my machine. I have it just vented out the window very temporarily. This is just uh, kind of testing it out. Now they did include some, I think, three millimeter, yeah, three millimeter basswood with the machine, so we'll use that for our first test cut. I have no idea for settings yet. I'm used to the dial lasers, um, so I kind of know how to do settings on that. CO2, that's a whole new game, so we're going to play around with some settings and we're going to try to make our very first cut. So I'm going to refresh it here on my laptop. And that should take an image of that. Yep. So I already have a circle that I made, just a tiny little circle. Let's move it just kind of the far, I don't know, let's move it on the side here. Start with that. I did go to the auto settings here, I think. Let's close that cover. Click on that circle. We're going to want to cut. Let's go 100% power. Maybe let's try 40. We'll process that. All right, I'm going to hit start. Looks ready. I'm going to swing over to the other side of the machine. Hit start. It does lock the cover in place so you can't open it up during the cutting process. Now it's exhausting the gas, it says on the laptop. All right, now it's done. Let's see if it made a cut. It did make a cut. And it cut clean through there, and that was fast. So my first impression with the, my first test cut, not having a clue what to do with settings, compared to I come from a dial laser world, where you always have a bunch of charring, even when you have the perfect settings, there's always charring around your cut. This basically, there's no charring. It's just incredible compared to what the dial laser was. Now I was hoping it would be better, but finally having a real world comparison, I can really see the benefits of the CO2 laser. Now that we got our first cut done, now I want to do some engraving. I'm going to try a popsicle stick. Now I've seen on their promos where you can engrave like a grain of rice with this camera system, you can fine tune it. I'm not going to go there quite yet. We'll try a popsicle stick at first, try the engraving settings and see how that goes. I'll load my popsicle stick up. They do have these little tiny clamps, if you can see those, that help hold everything in place. Because with the air assist, uh, there is a little bit of movement if the things aren't properly held down. And I'm even, oh, let's do it at an angle, so we'll see if that makes a difference at all.
All right, let's see how it turned out here. <laughs> oh, wow. Try to focus in on that. There we go. So that camera system works awesome. All right, let's try a toothpick here. All right, my toothpick is all loaded up. I'll load it up in the software and then I'll make the engraving. All right, let's see what happened here with the toothpick. And yeah, I probably could have lowered it a little bit. You're probably never gonna be able to see it on a camera. But yeah, there is a tiny little Chad DIY. You'll have to take my word for it there. Now, I don't know if this is really practical, like you're gonna be engraving a lot of toothpicks, but it just kind of shows the fine detail you can do with this machine. The last thing we're gonna test on this video is cutting clear acrylic. Now, this is one of the main reasons I wanted the CO2 laser compared to the dial laser. The dial lasers can do colored acrylic. They cannot do clear acrylic. And so I'm really excited to see how this works out. There you have it. Clear acrylic cut perfectly. So this video was just kind of getting started with this P2 laser. Uh, it can do so many more things than I did today. I just wanted to get a few test cuts, a little engraving on the way, check out that camera system. But I plan on doing a lot more videos in the future to really expand on the capabilities of this. Now, once again, I want to thank everyone for subscribing to my channel, watching my videos, to basically allowing me to have a machine like this in my shop. Now, if you're interested in buying your own X-Tool machine, I'll provide a few links in the description down below. I have some promo codes so you can save money. It helps out the channel. You'll save money buying your machine, and it really helps a lot. And if you do have any questions on this X-Tool P2 laser, please leave them in that comment section below, and we'll see you on the next one.